California, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah. The US simply wouldn't be the same without them. Hollywood, Silicon Valley, Las Vegas, the Grand Canyon. These are all quintessential symbols that make America, America. But much like the empires before America, this land wasn't always a part of the great American empire. No, no, no. All these states and more used to belong to America's southern neighbor, Mexico. But through a series of encroachments, wars, negotiations, and clever treaties, this vast area of land was stripped from the Mexicans and made a part of the US. And as a result, America got immensely wealthy from it. While Mexico? They suffered. Pretty terribly. The story of Mexico losing its land to the US is sadly the story of every major power that has ruled this planet since the beginning of civilization. It's the story of the French, the Dutch, the Spaniards, the Chinese, the Japanese, and much more when they were all at their height. The ruling power encroaches on the lesser powers, and the victor writes the history books. I personally still love America, it's given me everything that I have. But like the other darker American stories we've covered on this channel, this is a story that deserves to be told. My name is Jake Tran, I make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime with my team, subscribe for more. If you want to win $1,000 cash, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram at Jake Tran and you're automatically entered. A few of you have won already, watch out for fake accounts, I will never message you asking for money or to invest. And this is how the US stole Mexico. It is no secret that STEM jobs are among the highest paid positions in the world. Information security analysts make more than $98,000 a year, web developers bring in over $108,000 per year, and network architects make over $120,000 a year. The problem is learning the math and science required for these positions is really boring and intimidating. But thankfully, that is where Brilliant comes in. Brilliant is a learning platform that helps you learn valuable STEM skills that can make you a lot of money. And you do this through captivating interactive courses that are way funner than the traditional way of learning this stuff. A great place to start is their computer science learning path that goes over things like computer science fundamentals and algorithm fundamentals. If that doesn't sound like your thing, well don't worry because there are a ton of other courses, like applied probability and math for quantitative finance. Brilliant has helped over 11 million people truly understand essential STEM concepts through hands-on courses and interactive problem solving, instead of just memorizing stuff like they have you do in school. So if you're ready to start building these profitable skills, go to brilliant.org slash jtran with the link below and sign up for free. The first 200 people that sign up with my link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash jtran for 20% off now. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. In 1821, Mexico gained independence from Spain after fighting against them for more than 300 years. But becoming a successful, independent country turned out to be a whole lot more complicated than anyone in Mexico expected. Right off the bat, no one could decide who should lead the country, or how, which led to a whole lot of fighting and a very unstable government. And then, to make matters worse, Spain came right back and tried to take over Mexico again. And when Spain didn't succeed, France also tried their luck. It seemed like Mexico just couldn't catch a break no matter how hard they tried. Right until, seemingly out of nowhere, America, Mexico's big, bad neighbor to the north, stepped in and laid down the rules. You see, America had originally been settled by Europeans looking to escape their oppressive governments. And they didn't exactly like the idea of some European country like Spain or France taking over the North American continent. They really didn't want to have worked so hard to get away from Europe's rules just to be surrounded by their colonies again. It would be like living in Europe all over again. So, in 1823, President James Monroe decided to make a statement and put them in their place. He told Europe that now that America was a rich and powerful nation, they wouldn't get involved in Europe's affairs, as long as Europe would agree not to create any new colonies in the Western Hemisphere or try to interfere with any of their politics. It was a classic, you stay out of my business and I'll stay out of yours arrangement and it became known as the Monroe Doctrine. Americans were pretty proud of the Monroe Doctrine and what it stood for. It meant they had finally made it onto the global stage. America could tell Europe what to do and they would just have to listen. But it also put America in a tricky position. You see, just like their European ancestors, 
Americans really liked the idea of conquering all of North and maybe even South America. But now, with the Monroe Doctrine basically saying, hands off the West, they would look like pretty big hypocrites if they tried taking anyone else's land. Luckily, in 1845, James Polk became president of America, and he had some pretty clever ideas on how to get around the pesky Monroe Doctrine. President James Polk was a firm believer in Manifest Destiny, the idea that white Americans were destined to take control of all of North America. And the only thing standing in their way was the Monroe Doctrine. If they wanted to conquer North America while still looking like they respect the doctrine, they would have to do it in a way that looked nothing like what Europe used to do. They couldn't just invade, kill a bunch of people, and claim the land as their own they would have to use subtler tactics that looked less like conquering and a little more like making a friendly arrangement. So in 1845, President Polk sent a representative to Mexico to ask if America could buy Alta California, the ex-Mexican state we know as California today. Alta California was believed to be rich in gold, and if President Polk could get his hands on some of it, America would have all the money it needed to buy up as much of its neighbor's land as possible. So President Polk offered the new Mexican government $30 million for the state, or around $1.2 billion in today's money. Mexico was furious. They couldn't believe America had the audacity to offer to buy a massive chunk of their land for just $30 million. Did they really think they were that hard up? They were so angry, the Mexican government even refused to meet with President Polk's representative, and he was sent packing back to Washington. So Polk's first plan had failed, but luckily, he had a few more tricks up his sleeve. In the 1820s, the newly independent Mexico quickly realized it was going to need a lot of help turning its economy around and making a success of itself. And one of the ways it tried to do it was by inviting Americans to farm on Mexican land. As the years went by, more and more American families moved to the Mexican state of Texas and set up farms and towns wherever they went. By 1829, the Americans in Texas actually outnumbered the native Mexicans, and that's where the trouble started. You see, all the Americans in Texas didn't really like the idea of living under a Mexican government. Mexico had also just abolished slavery, which was really bad news for all the American farmers who used slaves to work their land. So the Americans wanted out. They wanted to join America, where slavery was still totally legal and no one would stand in the way of them and their farming profits. But leaving Mexico wasn't going to be as easy as just switching sides because they felt like it. They would have to be smart about it. So they went to war. With more money and more guns than the poorly trained and equipped Mexicans, it was a piece of cake. And in 1836, Tejas became the independent republic of Texas, a country with its own government and its own rules. The only problem with all of this was Mexico knew most Texans wanted to become part of America, and if they did, Mexico would never have the chance to take back their land ever again. So Mexico made it clear Annexing Texas, or trying to make it an official part of America, would be an act of war. And that was all President Polk needed to start the war that would cost Mexico half of its land. For almost 10 years, Texans tried to get America to take them in as a member state, at first, most of the more liberal states disagreed. They didn't want another conservative, pro-slavery state to join the Union and shift the balance of power between the North and South, right until President Polk took power. He didn't care if Texas was pro-slavery or not. All he cared about was expanding America's borders. So in 1845, under Polk's encouragement, Congress finally voted to offer to annex the Republic. Basically, America was offering to officially make Texas a state of America. In preparation for what he knew was coming, 
President Polk ordered American troops to camp along the American-Texan border to stop Mexico from interfering once Texas accepted their offer. And in December 1845, Texas officially became America's 28th state. American troops entered their new territory, and as expected, Mexico prepared itself for war. On President Polk's orders, American soldiers moved closer and closer to Texas's border with Mexico. They made it look like America was about to invade Mexico. To keep the upper hand, Mexican troops attacked first, killing 11 American soldiers. Little did they know that by doing so, they had just played right into President Polk's hands. The Monroe Doctrine may have made it unacceptable to invade a country in the Western Hemisphere, but it didn't say anything about going to war to protect American citizens. As soon as Mexico attacked the American troops in Texas, President Polk announced that Mexico had, quote, shed American blood on American soil, end quote, and that was grounds to go to war. So Congress did what Polk had wanted all along and declared war on Mexico. The game was on. Let's face it, compared to America's money, guns, and troops, the Mexicans were not in a great position to fight back. Right from the start, it was clear who the winner was gonna be. And after throwing the first punch, Mexico couldn't exactly justify asking anyone for help to protect themselves. They had started the war, and now they would have to see it through themselves. In just a little over a year, America nearly destroyed the entire country and took over every single one of the Mexican states along America's border. By late 1847, American troops had gone so far as to capture Mexico City, the country's capital, down on their luck and suffering massive losses of life and money, the Mexican government knew if it didn't end the war soon, there would be nothing left of their country. So they took a seat at the negotiating table and accepted the fact that the negotiations were not gonna end on a high note. Almost completely occupied by American soldiers and volunteer fighters, Mexico didn't have a lot of bargaining power when it came to discussing a peace treaty. The government fought tooth and nail to keep America from taking its land, but as talks carried on and more American soldiers flooded into Mexico, they realized they were fighting a losing battle. Enter the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the agreement that brought a two-year war to an end. Here's what the treaty said. For winning the war, America would be able to keep the Mexican states in which they had the most troops. That meant California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Wyoming. All of these states were once part of Mexico, but were awarded to America after winning the Mexican-American War. Mexico was also forced to relinquish any claims it had on Texas, allowing it to fully integrate into the United States. In the end, more than 55% of Mexico's land was handed over to America as part of the treaty. And in exchange, America agreed to stop invading Mexico and pay the Mexican government $15 million for the damages caused and losses incurred during the war. That's around half a billion today. They also agreed to forgive $3 million of debt Mexican citizens owed to Americans. And that was it. President Polk had gotten what he wanted. America had taken over more than half of Mexico's land, and it had cost them less than the $30 million they had offered to pay for California just three years earlier. Plus, no one could say they violated the Monroe Doctrine, because technically, Mexico was responsible for starting the war. It was one of America's biggest strategic political successes yet. But it was about to become even more profitable than President Polk or anyone in the American government could ever have imagined. President Polk had always suspected there was gold to be mined in California. It was one of the reasons he was willing to offer Mexico $1.5 billion in today's money to buy it and make it part of America. And he wasn't wrong. Just days before the Mexican government signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, 
and handed over ownership of California to America, gold was discovered in the state. But by then, it was too late. The deal between Mexico and America was as good as signed. In the next seven years, which became known as the California Gold Rush, more than 750,000 pounds of gold was extracted, worth about $500 million then, and around $17 billion today. In just the first two years of the gold rush, more gold was extracted in California than America had paid for half of Mexico's land. If Mexico hadn't gone to war and lost California, there's a chance it would have been far more powerful, developed, and a whole lot richer than it is today. And that wasn't even the end of the harsh consequences Mexico had to face for daring to stand up against the only global superpower. In 1922, all those states that America had bought from Mexico decided they needed the water in the Colorado River a whole lot more than Mexico needed it. After all, they had big developed cities paid for with money from the gold rush. Obviously, they deserved to take the biggest share of the water, so they divided it up, dammed it, and rerouted it across America's southern states, leaving Mexico with nothing but a few sad drops running in from across the border. And sure, it must have been disappointing to discover the new water agreement everyone signed offered the entire country of Mexico less than half the water allotment they gave California, but what made it even worse was the fine print. The part of the agreement where Mexico was chosen as one of the first parties to lose its water rights in case of a drought. Right now, America's South is experiencing one of its worst droughts in history. Water levels in dams are falling, rain is scarce, and everyone is desperately trying to figure out what to do once the water runs out. But while Mexico has already cut its water usage by more than 5% in the hopes of keeping the dams full, American farmers are being forced to waste water on crops they don't really need, just so they don't lose access to their water entirely. Known as use it or lose it laws, there are rules in place so that if a farmer doesn't use a specific amount of water every month or year, the overall amount of water they're allowed to use can be massively cut, leaving them without enough supply to keep their farms going. So, while Mexicans are experiencing water shutoffs and shortages as the government tries to save the water in America's dams, American farmers are planting crops they don't need and irrigating empty fields, wasting millions of gallons of water, just to keep up with some law the government made decades ago. America has a track record of using questionable tactics to get what it wants and starting an unnecessary war with Mexico isn't even the worst of it. For nearly two centuries, the American government has carried out dozens of coups and secret operations around the world that make what it did to Mexico look like a walk in the park. We're talking murder, enhanced interrogation, and human rights violations. And the CIA's black site program is probably one of the best examples of how dark these secret operations could get. For nearly a decade, Countless Arabic men and women, of which many were innocent, were accused of being terrorists. They were arrested or kidnapped, rounded up in secret prisons around the world, and subjected to some of the harshest, most violent, enhanced interrogations the CIA could dream up. While America was accusing countries like Syria and Iraq of human rights violations, its soldiers and intelligence officers were doing nearly the exact same thing to their prisoners without even charging them with a crime and the lengths these CIA officers went to in their War Against Terror get darker than anything we've ever published before. But let's be real. A video on the CIA's black sites and how enhanced interrogation likely still happens today would probably set off a million red flags and get instantly demonetized by YouTube, which is why we've made it a full-length private documentary that's only available to members of this channel. All you have to do to get access to this documentary right now, as well as the other feature-length videos we've already published on Monsanto, the company that owns the world's food supply, MK Ultra, the CIA's mind control program, Efri Jepstein, and the roots of terror in the Middle East, is to click that join button below. People pay tens of thousands of dollars every year to universities, only to leave not knowing anything about how the world really works. But by becoming a member, you get all this priceless information for just $5 a month. And we promise you it's way more entertaining than university lectures. 
Plus, there's also a refund policy, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. So scroll down and click that join button below right now. What's up guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you're new here, my name is Jake and this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more. Remember you can always dislike and unsubscribe whenever you want so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. But yeah, I'll keep this one short, stay dangerous out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.